First of all, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, thank you for your tendency. So when we, I started to realize something like 15 years ago, that was before the crisis, 2008, that, you know, when we create this global world, and the umbrella of this globalization is WTO, World Trade Organization. Do we have a global world really? Of course, WTO, based on the custom tariffs, it decreases tariffs from 25% to 8% on average. After that, we declare the world is global. Really, we have global goods. We have Mercedes, which has approximately the same price in Germany and the same price in Armenia. We have iPhones, Apples, these are global goods and services. But do we have in reality global world? When there is a living condition, by example, in Burundi, is 700 times less than in Luxembourg. 700 times. On top of that, could we say that the global world is global when on average 1% of the world's population, 1% rich ones, are keeping on the hand 50% of wealth. That makes 80, 82% in Russia. In Armenia is 89%. That's a global world. That's a globalization. One, and the, and the last thing is the regionalization. Yes, we have global world, but we have regions. What is EU? It is the union, economic union of 28 countries. They have their own rules. What is the recent, recently created EAIU, uh, Eurasian Economic Union? As of today, this is the union of five countries with another rules of management, of tariffs, of exportation and importation. Well, a couple of countries are going to join that union very, very soon. And my idea is, does it useful? We have to go farther? What we are doing? Those type of unions are against globalization or are the sons of doctors of the globalization? That is the way to move. But here I am bringing to your opinion, to your attention, what's happened last four years between these two blocks. And uh, uh, the interesting thing here is that in 2009, just after the crisis, two countries, Sweden and Poland, they made a proposal that let's create an institution of Eastern Partnership, which means having in mind the difficulties of joining of some Balkan countries to the EU, let's prepare these six countries for the coming, being coming members of EU. These were Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. Six countries. What was the aim? And five years of my life I spent there. The aim was approximation of legislation, approximation of institutions. Because when you don't have this, and you have a new member of EU, you feel some uh, discomfort, you know. Uh, the, the habits are different, the rules are different, etc., etc. But among them, by example, Georgia, and especially Armenia, Armenia was estimated as the best for the approximation. And in November 2013, there was a Riga summit. In Riga summit, finally, these countries are called to sign asso association agreement with EU. You know, on that time, you, you remember the, 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 the events happening, happening in, in, in Ukraine. In two months after that, we had uh, Yanukovych resigned. There was a story with Crimea, etc., etc. You know, they came to Riga, and the Armenian president, uh, without having an agreement with us, with the majority, without having consultation, he said, I'm not going to sign it for the time being. We will sign the Eurasian Economic Union. Well, the same did Belarus. The same did Belarus. Three countries, three countries, uh, Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine, they join the association agreement. Uh, what it means, an association agreement with Europe on that time, it means that they accept the foreign trade rules of Europe, which is, in fact, 4% custom tariff on average, 4%. 
On that time, average custom tariff for Armenia was 2.7. Freedom was widened than in Europe. But we go to the EAU with the average custom tariff, 9%. And, uh, uh, and there was a country number six, Azerbaijan. This country decided, this country decided do not say anything. Having in mind that like this country will be neutral and will keep more, more opportunities for the own devel development. Now I'm going to, to show you shortly what were the results. Before joining uh, this EU association, Mr. Uh, Stefan Fuller, a uh, special commissar of EU, used to say that our, our calculation shows that these countries, after signing association agreement, are going to have at least 6% economic growth each year. When Armenia was decided to go, we used to consider that there was a pressure. Whatever it was, I don't have uh, insider information. Armenia decided to go EAU. Moscow said that you are going to have a 9% of economic growth. Growth. You know, what happened after that? What is happening when, on one hand, you have the World Trade Organization, on the other hand, within this world, you have economic unions with their own system of tariffs? What is the result? So for the time being, I came here to say to you that in both cases, the result is bad. Nobody meets the expectations. These are the figures for, 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 for GDP. You see the catastrophic situation with Russia, but uh, Russia was not a member, was not a candidate of the association. But let's have a look to the Belarus. What happened there? Before that, they have had something like 8-10% growth. The economy of Belarus is not growing last five years. Before that, you know, I can be I, I can be honest to you, Mr. Lukashenko all the time was elected without any big problems. But nowadays, when you go to Belarus and you ask to the Belarusian economists or governmental representatives, what you're going to do, guys? What is your proposal for the economic growth? Zero answer. The other case was Armenia. So country, you know, went up to the 0% growth in 2016. Armenia used to have 7, 8, 10% growth before that. You know, and which is not enough. We are country we, which a huge migration of people, you know, and then again, we were not able to stop it. And <coughs> which, what is remarkable, even for old members, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyz Republic, they joined this union, and you see Kazakhstan, which was very successful with a, with a huge amount of resources, is getting down, is getting down. But most surprise, surprising things happened with these countries, three other countries except Georgia, Ukraine and Moldova, uh, they, when they decided to join the European Union. I must say here that the figures for GDP of Ukraine are in comparison, we remove Crimea and two oblasts right now being in the war. We compare 23, 23 regions with other 23 regions. So it doesn't include this, this uh, negative impact, doesn't include it here. Doesn't include it here. We neutralize that. Huh? And you see that, yes, well, you don't see any 6%. <coughs> For Ukraine, it's a catastrophic, you know, developments. More or less situation is good in Georgia, but very far from the expectation. You can say that was promised 6% growth, and this growth has been achieved in Georgia by tourism, but nobody built a perspective country based on tourism in this world. It's, it's a temporary event. For the Azerbaijan, so then we can say that, again, th they doesn't meet expectations, but the figure is very low on a very low level, in practically one, zero, one percent, even minus percent growth, growth in the global world. What, when we go to, to have a look to the trade, here we see the catastrophe. It's a catastrophic situation. For example, within last, after the joining of this union, 
after the promising that people that is going to be marvelous we will be we will see the developments what happened with the russia <coughs> this is inflation i don't want to talk on, on that too much we have limited time but for the russia unemployment you know you can see that no changes in unemployment no decrease in inflation even in the world inflation is getting down you know inflation is not main thing for the modern world because world population is growing up 1.5 percent it's not a case time to talk much more on the inflation so case and postulates are not realized today you cannot see it. you cannot find them anywhere but the other issue is the foreign trade keep in mind in 2013 russia had foreign trade 848 billion dollars last year almost half seven 471 this year they're going to have 500. this is the result of this in a brackets success look to the ukraine what is the problem of the country you know then again they have just half of the trade which they had four years ago they don't have money if they don't have it money if they don't have exportation they don't have a hard currency, and that is why national currency value is getting down, creating inflation, creating, uh, creating a, a big range of vulnerable people in the country. <coughs> the same is with Moldova. Georgia again is, vo is, is, is getting down, is getting down, but a little bit attempts are less than other countries. So. What is, what is the, the, the conclusion here? What is the summary here? We started, I have, I have a group, labor, laboratory, economic laboratory, analyzing the situation. And we started to realize, first, even if the borders between Ukraine and Russia are closed, and we know why, there is a trade between Russia and Ukraine. By example, Ukraine, Ukraine Salah is coming to Armenia, and we are re-exporting that into the to the Russia. Or uh, uh, the same with other goods and services. So, in fact, but this is obvious. This is obvious that, uh, in fact, we create an economic wall here. There is an economic wall. Uh, second issue. Second issue. Expectations that trade condition will bring to the integration weren't meet the weren't meet our our, our our will you know and we started to realize <coughs> that that this union this uh, regional unions became as an instrument for a pressure for a political pressure uh, the other one so we see that increasing influence of china and uh, far east countries like japan korea etc etc we gave them space. So the trade between Europe and Eastern Europe, let's say Eastern Europe, you used to say that Eastern Europe is a Poland. In fact, in, in my part of the world, we say that there is a Western Europe, there is a Central Europe, which is Poland, Czech, and we are Eastern Europe. So we make a difference between that. So the, 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 the trade between Western and Eastern Europe was was fulfilled, was compensated uh, via the, on the part of China and South Korea. You know, they trade was reduced, but they found a, found a place to come in. We started to investigate, to research the increasing role of this part of the world. I mean, Far East on the economic life of our country is increasing. So I came here to say there's something wrong is this scale. Something you lose, okay, you lose so. We lose so, but you lose. You know? There are there are no winners here. I came to say to you, okay, if Europe has some problems with Russia, I'm not I was not a friend of uh, association uh, of Ar Armenia, Russia this economic union because my expectations are very weak very weak and in Armenia I've done the, the only one who was voting voting against and was saying that don't create such a unions don't create it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game for the future 
But I come in, came to here to say to you, we have to do something. Even if you are keeping the sanctions against Russia, you can have a free trade agreement with this part of the world, you know. This is the result of my investigation. And you know, this year, this is the only year, 2017, uh, Europe, on average, is going to have economic growth 1.9%. But what you are going to do next year, in 2018? What you will do in 2019? Without uh, creating this wall between two parts of Europe. Uh, you remove the wall in Berlin, but we create a wall here, economic wall. There is a wall between Ukraine and Russia. What we are going, why, how we are going to to survive there. Uh, this is my point of view. For example, uh, well, well, how we can deal with it. Uh, last year we had an exportation of tomato to, 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 to Russia for $1 million. This year, $26 million. We started to, f to understand, do we have a such amount of, are we a small country of tomato? And then we discovered that this tomato coming from Turkey. Then there is no direct, direct, uh, uh, di 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 direct trade between Armenia and Turkey. You know, and that's create a shadow economy. That's create a non principle non principle system of trade. So that's, this is the idea I brought just to you, one idea. This is a good sample that how we are not allowed to deal with the country's economic systems. Thank you for your attention. some questions. Perhaps I have a first question. What would, would have become of this area if uh, what I suggested in my speech, the member states of the Council of Europe engaged together in an economic <coughs> union? Yeah. That would have been Russia and uh, many of those you mentioned, wouldn't it have been more clever than to separate to be only 27 members and now dismantling? My proposal is that, you know, an economic cooperation is a cooperation for people. Yeah. Sanctions should be against elites. <coughs> you know, my proposal is that we have to have a, well, Armenia is, is uh, now this, uh, what, Recently, we signed an agreement, not economic, but association agreement with you. And we will keep the GSP plus system for our foreign trade. But, you know, my, my idea is let's remove the virus, let's create trade, trade agreements. You will punish somebody for leaving, for the political, for, I don't know, for example, if you travel between Russia and Ukraine, you punish elites. Yeah. You punish elites, not trade. Or you can't take a sanctions. Sanctions have nothing to do with the system of trade. You increase shadow economy in my country. And we, well, maybe we were not <coughs> able to increase shadow economy in your country, your cultural level, economic level, economic is a culture, is a higher. But anyway, we are damaging you also. This is idea what I'm, I, I'm telling you. My idea is refusing, eliminating. So, um, no other question? Yes, uh, lady. Hi, I'm in Leon Taylor. I actually found out that my name is quite popular in Armenia recently. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Liana. Is, Liana, uh, you're right. Yeah, I, I recently visited uh, Armenia about three times in the past year. Yeah, yeah. And I found that I actually, it's funny to find out that that's where my name in a way, some ways comes from. Yeah. Uh, but my question is, has to do with, uh, I noticed in my trips to Armenia that the European Union has a lot of invest is a lot of investing a lot of money in Armenia, including it has all kinds of development programs. And when you look at the budgets that they're spending in Armenia compared to some other countries uh, that are much smaller in size, what do you see the relationship of the European Union going for going forward? And uh, um, I know Russian involvement, for example, I believe Russia is uh, is there no is there more military involvement in Armenia as well in the recent years. So it, it's which 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 way are you leaning towards more? Look, economically, Russians say that they, they invest more in Armenia, which, well, it's not just an investment. <coughs> of 
course, you can estimate that $3 billion. But you know, economically, we get them not less than $3 billion. As far as the question of armies is concerned, Russia is keeping troops in Yungi with a special Russia weapon. They are not just financing. They never is are financing Armenian army. Even more, some uh, some uh, utilities of these Russian troops are paid by the Armenian government. So the first part of your question, of your question, <coughs> you know, Europe never invest in Armenia seriously. You assist in us. You don't like to invest. You get, you, you get my, us money, you say that vis-a-vis -vis the population, which is the biggest amount of money. But you like to assist, you know. And nobody never after that forward what is happening. I'm one who is not likely, he has no likely behave to that approach. I always like telling, don't assist us. Like this, we, we would like to construct a modern country. Then you assist us without any consequences, economic responsibilities. No, we don't want to be like, you know, give us money. I don't, I hate it. I hate it. And, but it, by the way, that's spoiling the country. Somebody is coming from Europe asking for the special program or a special endowment, $30 million to use on non-traditional energy. What did he, what did he believe? And they, then he went out, he don't need that. I cannot understand this mm, tremendous number of European programs. I, I'm not going to say everything is bad, but mostly it's bad. So thank you and again applause for